Wildstorm comic books later on, and he was a, he was a dope graffiti artist. And we, him, Smog, and I started the crew in late '94. And then I was a kid, bro. I was I was fucking 14 years old, 15 years old. Was know? Yoda in a different crew? Was he writing Yoda at the time? He that was he writing met him? Yoda, but he wasn't from any other crews. He was just like, hey, when we started two crews at once. One was UDC, Undisputed Champs, and AAA. And I just started, Undisputed Champs was based off of this one uh, Dell song from back in the days with Dell and Q-Tip and shit. Um, and yeah, um, so Yoda was dope, bro, and he had an internship at Wildstorm Comic Book, so I was very comic book influenced. And we went out, and he, I was too young for the internship, and he introduced me to Jim Lee, who was the dude who did all the X-Men back in the days, dope-ass artist. Uh, and, um, dude, let me back up. I'm sorry. Let me back up. In 1991, this is, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I got ADD, I'm going to be real with you. In 1991, Todd McFarlane released Spawn issue one, and they had an, a comic book signing at Golden Apple on Melrose. My brother and I got dropped off at, at six in the morning, we're in the line. I'm like, dude, I'm going to give this fool a gift, and I kind of wanted to show Spawn, I mean, show Todd McFarlane when he came, because he was going to sign the first issues. I drew Spawn, and I'm trying to find this footage because the owner of Gold Apple died and it's under new ownership or whatever. Dude, he comes up to the line with his daughter, and she's obviously in her 30s now, um, and goes, what's that? And I said, here, Mr. McFarlane, and I gave him the drawing of Spawn I did when I was 11 years old. And he goes, you know what? To, on camera, too, to his newborn daughter, we just found your long lost brother. You know what I mean? And that was my motivation. That's what made me feel, oh, dude, I just got props from Todd McFarlane, my favorite artist. So that was in 91. Fast forward to 96, Yoda takes me to Wildstorm Comic Books and lets me color and ink one of Jim Lee's. Um, and if people don't know Jim Lee, he's the one that does all those sick lines, X-Men, and submitted it to Jim Lee for future internship. And he was totally down, but I was underage. When I was 18, I was going to have a, a potential internship at Wildstorm Comic Books. Next year, Yoda had some issues with his own personal issues, and it kind of like fucked everything up, and I didn't get to proceed with that. It was in La Jolla, California and shit. And then he also stopped painting after that, and so it was kind of weird, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was one of my, th those are kind of my influences right there. And my brother and I have always done, my brother still does comic books, you know what I mean? Like his own, like, independent thing with his buddies, and um, we both kind of started together, but. And if you look at some of my old work, you could kind of notice, like, the anatomy. I'm like, hey, that fool did some, like, straight fucking Robotech shit. That's my influence right there, Robotech, bro. When I said that, that, okay, that, there you go, Robotech. Japanimation, that was my shit, bro. You're meeting other writers. Uh, besides Yoda, are there any other writers that come across your path in that early phase where you're getting acquainted with graffiti? That's funny, right, when you said that word, but the first one that came to mind, it's funny that you said that, is... Um, one of your current, your previous guests, Fish, who used to write Pissed in 22 back in the days, this fool, when we painted the last wall, he said, and I was with a group of three different fools, and they were from GAW, like, fool, I met you in 95. I'm like, oh, fuck, I met you here. And then Fish is like, fool, I met you in 94. And I thought I met Fish in 96 when I got into KOG and LTS. And so he was like, fool, I met you at some rave in Glendale and you came in with a helmet and a black book. You came in and did a bunch of head spins, picked up your black book, went over to me and said, hey, and get, show me your black book. He said that that was in 94. So I didn't remember that until like a couple weeks ago. I started cracking up. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, that I remember that rave. It was like a half hip hop rave in uh, Glendale. So that, I remember meeting Fish back then. Um, I remember, oh, so I got one for you. In 91, bro, I was kind of like on some like Melrose hip hop shop shit. With the, I had a hex jacket. Dude, I found a hex jacket on the bus, bro. I didn't buy it at the hip hop shop on Melrose and shit. Hector Rios and shit. And I was flossing that shit. And then some big old like six foot, like two bald, like kind of cholo looking dude wearing like some Mickey Mouse gloves and a tied backpack like a groover goes, hey, big dog. All right, dog, what part are you from? I'm like, what the fuck? Nah, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, homie. He goes, all right. He goes, Ooh, and he did some shit with a whistle. Fool, that was tumor. 
What? That was tumor, homie. And then I seen, and the reason I know it's him is because of Circa 96, 97. I don't know if you remember Circa 96, 97 was a rave. Um, downtown, it got raided by the fucking cops. They, everyone started running the streets of downtown on acid and shit. And I remember Tumor with a whistle in the gloves going, and they were playing hardcore. <laughs> and he's going, hardcore? <laughs> hardcore? Like, so yeah. Uh, How do you know it was Tumor? I, it was him. I seen him. It was, it was him, trust me. And he was into that shit. Like, I was, I was on the rave scene, bro. That's where I come from. And so I remember that dude from that scene. You know what I mean? Like, like he was in the, I'm, I'm, I, I produced techno, bro. Techno and drum and bass. So that was I was at all the raves as a youngster trying to get in that mix. You know what I mean? 